is of D, x to the 1, x to the 2, x to the n, or x to the n minus 1, is a subgroup. And actually, n doesn't even have to be finite. x to the order of x does not even have to be finite. I can give it an order, and that's still a subgroup. 10 seconds to free. Very easy. Leave it to a simple exercise. So, but notice, what does Lagrange's theorem say? Lagrange's theorem say, the order of a subgroup defines the order of a, the group. This is a subgroup. What's the order of the subgroup? Well, we have n distinct elements. Why? Because suppose we have the two same elements, xi equals xj. Suppose that i did not equal j. Then you would have an i and j are less than n. Because by definition of this then eight. Then xi. I don't want to erase the Lagrange thing. It's very important. Everyone understands this. So if not, I quit on your soul. But then I am sad. I'm the comment. So x i equals x j or i comma j then less than n. Okay? And i does not and suppose i does not equal j. Suppose this is true. Suppose i does not equal j. Then multiply both sides by inverse of the smaller. So without loss of general, so we have to make it This is what we say. Multiply both sides by without loss of general. Some might say that I've not talked to many of the math symbols. I will. I will over, in, over email. But for now, they just close. OK, don't close on me. OK, multiply both sides. I can assume i is a smaller one, but I'll say that on the map. I only have like eight inverse. Multiply both sides by, by um, six inverse, i times the interior i. That should be saying d equals x to the j minus i. All this means by the inverse of x, all of this is just x inverse times x inverse uh, i times and it's multiplied by x and x i to the i really is x x i times. It's just my fancy lingo. And this is this is this generalization of what happens when we So e equals x to j minus i. So j minus i is less than n. Contradiction. And by the way, I have more pi and less and less than j. So, but then n is also, and j minus i is in the form. Why? Because j does not equal i. And I picked i to be smaller than j. So, yeah, let's see. It, but n was the order of an element. The order is the least positive n. So they equal, when ray x raised to the n, it's equal to identity. So you have contradiction. So, so in other words, H has to be a subgroup, a subgroup of size N. So this means the or and the subgroup of size of N N is order. So the order of the group, the corollary, is order of the elements has the same size as the subgroup. Has to by the order of the group. Why? Because the subgroup size is size n, size of the order of the element. So n, by Lagrange's theorem, must divide the order of the group. 10 seconds, OK. So now here, I'm just going to erase this. Last part. Oh, good. So notice x to the n. So now x. So 
x to the order of the group is equal to x. Okay. This is actually important there. Corollary again. X to the order of the group equals e. Ten second group. Very simple. X to the g equals. But what does g equal? G divides. The order of the group divides the order of elements. Divides the group. So it equals x to the n times k. Where n times k equals order of g, and x is and n. But here's the thing: n is the order of x, which equals x to the n to the k by multiplication of x module, and this equals e to the k, which is equal to e. So and here's the kind of I, I'm sure you memorize the Gondis theorem for now because it's very important. Memorize the rest of your life. In the odd n group, we apply the Gondis theorem and use that correlate to say, what is this theorem? For any x in Rn. So reminder, i.e., x comma n, if the greatest common divisor of x comma n equals one, then x to the order of r n equals e. But here's the thing: we know this is equal to one. E is the identity of r n is really one. And we also know that we're working mod, but we don't have to write that for now. Because that's it's implied when you're working on RN. But I will write this because from number theory, out of like, just because from my heart, I remember that fact. I love that fact. But it's already implied when you're, when you're doing multiplication that you're working mod N. But what is RN? And that's very simple. How do we know this is true? Order of Rn, very from that correlate directly. So from corollary. But quick question, guys. What is order of Rn? It's a definition. Of all the things that are relatively prime. The n. What's all the other things that are relatively prime? The n. Oh, yeah, a totient function. And that's from this theorem. From corollary. Dog. Here's the thing, but but because Rn equals what Rn, you don't have to write this down for the punchline. But Rn equals by then by definition. So x to the by then is equal to, or identically, 1 mod n. So we are done. That is all this thing. That's awesome. And for Miles Little Theorem, very simple. Plug in p for phi of n. What all the things relatively prime this P? How many how many things? How many things relatively prime? P minus one. So x to the P minus one is identically one mod P for x for P to be of x comma P equals one. Now that is an awesome application of number theory, of group theory to number theory. Very important result. And actually, the one from number theory existed long before the one in group theory. Anyways, thank you for staying for my 50th video. It has been an honor teaching so much to you guys. Okay, time's almost up. Math Ninja, out.